sometimes it'd be nice to know how many solutions we're going to get before we do the quadratic formula. It's kind of a way to check ourselves and also a quick way to find out if it's going to have a no solution or not. And that's where the discriminant comes into play. The discriminant is what is underneath the radical, the b squared minus 4ac. I'm going to show you how to use it and why it works. We'll start with this problem. And again, I'm just using what's underneath the radical, the b squared minus 4ac. And so I'll start here. And the b squared, well, the b is negative 5. So that's negative 5 squared minus 4 times my a value times my c value. And what that's going to give me is basically 25 minus 24, which is a 1. If the number inside your radical is positive, you're going to have two answers. And you might say, well, why? Why does that work? Well, here's how it works. The rest of the problem is going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of that 1 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. And so on the top, you're, the square root of 1 is 1, but it doesn't matter if it comes out normal or not. You're going to have 5 plus something and 5 minus something, which gives you two answers. Here's the graph of this. And as you can see, it goes through the x-axis twice. And a reminder that a solution for a quadratic function is where it hits the x-axis. Here's the next one. And again, uh, I'm going to do b squared minus 4ac. Just a reminder, since it's been a couple screens since we've seen that, that's my discriminant. And I'm going to go negative 4 squared. Again, remember to put a negative number in parentheses, otherwise your calculator may not work so well with that, times 4 times a times c. And what you're going to get in this time is you're going to get a 0. Now, that does not mean you have 0 solutions. It means you have 1 solution. How does that work, you ask? Well, here we go. The rest of the quadratic formula would be uh, negative b, which is positive 4 here, plus or minus the square root of that 0, all over 2 times a, which is 8. Well, you're going to have 4 plus, well, first of all, what's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. So you're going to have 4 plus 0 all over 8, and 4 minus 0 all over 8. Are you hearing this? It's the same thing. It's still going to just be 4 over 8 or 1 half. Well, let's look at the graph for that one. Here you can see it only has one solution, and it hits it right there where x equals 0.5, which is 1 half. Here is the third scenario. And so b squared. 2 squared minus 4 times my a value times my c value. And I am going to get a negative 80 for this one. Well, that's going to give me no real solution. And here's why. When I put it into the full formula, I would get negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 80 all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Well, can we find the square root of a negative number? Is there a number times itself that's ever going to be negative? And the answer is no. So there is no real solution for this one. Now, does that mean that there is no graph? No, that's incorrect. It just means that it, the, the parabola itself does not touch the x-axis. There's no number that we could put in for x to make that equation true. Let me show you the graph for this one. Notice you do have a parabola, but it does not touch the x-axis. So in conclusion, you use the discriminant to find out how many solutions you have for x. If the discriminant is positive, you have two solutions. If the discriminant is zero, you have one solution. And if the discriminant is negative, you have no real solutions. All right, now go have fun practicing this concept.